Uh, my name is Miranda Castell. I am a professor at Harvard Medical School, uh, and uh, I'm a practicing clinician at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, and I am the director of the uh, Mastocytosis Center, uh, also at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, at the center, we uh, actually see patients who have what we call mast cell activation disorders and mastocytosis, and we have a collection of about uh, more than 2,000 patients with one disease or another. Uh, mastocytosis is a rare disease uh, that has two versions. One would be cutaneous mastocytosis, which is a disease of children mostly. Um, and uh, that disease uh, occurs shortly after birth. And then uh, towards puberty, the children uh, who have the dots in their skin uh, kind of resolve those dots. And we think that uh, that is something that has persisted. You know, we have observed that for the last 50 years or so in which we have been following kids with that. We believe that the mast cells are created not equal. Some mast cells that go to the skin are different than the mast cells that go to the bone marrow. They are uh, hematopoietic cells who are like in the bone marrow. And a very few kids will continue to have the disease as, as adults or adolescents. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in, in the uh, adult population, systemic mastocytosis is like a rare, you know, a disease less than uh, <coughs> one in 100,000 uh, patients would have the disease. And it manifests in, uh, in a various uh, uh, kind of presentations. Uh, the most common presentation is what we call the indolent systemic mastocytosis. Those are patients who have no limitation in their lifespan, and uh, they will have some complications that I will uh, describe to you in a few minutes. And then there are patients who have what we call advanced mastocytosis, in which in those patients, um, their disease uh, looks like more like a, a lymphoma, malignancy, leukemia type, in which the disease advances much more rapidly. And we want to do something for those patients because the lifespan is limited in them. In the patients with the indolent systemic mastocytosis, uh, the majority also have the same lesions that the kids have, so the skin may be covered with little dots, and they have some complications. Mast cells are cells that we call uh, come from the immune uh, system, and they are innate immune cells, uh, unlike other cells of the immune system, like what we call B cells and T cells that help us fend against bacteria and viruses. The mast cells are located the skin, in the uh, nose, in the lungs, in the gastrointestinal uh, mucosa. So they are kind of everywhere, distributed everywhere in, uh, in the body. And uh, those mast cells can actually increase. And that's what happens uh, in patients with mastocytosis because there is a mutation of one of the proteins that they express in the surface that's called KIT, K-I-T. So once they, that protein is mutated, and we call the mutation uh, the number of the codon, which is 816, 816, in that codon, if the uh, kid is mutated, the mast cells kind of replicate a little bit faster than in normal people, and they are more active. So, so to say, the switch is on most of the time. And, and then patients actually have normal lifespan, so it doesn't curtail the lifespan there may be more complications. Um, some patients may have anaphylaxis, which is what happens when somebody has a peanut allergy and then they, they have like a wheezing episode, the throat is tightening, they need epinephrine. So a lot of patients with mastocytosis, systemic mastocytosis and indolent systemic mastocytosis have this uh, um, anaphylaxis. And the events can be triggered by some triggers that we can review, uh, they're all the, uh, you know, very personalized. So it's not that everybody responds to everything. No, some patients tolerate very well uh, aspirin, ibuprofen, and non anti-inflammatory medications, but some patients don't. And uh, how many, probably less than one third do not tolerate. So it is very personalized. Uh, some patients don't tolerate alcohol. So, so again, um, the patients may react to different stimuli, and the stimuli is very, very personal. And then uh, the uh, anaphylaxis, again, can be provoked or unprovoked. Sometimes the patients don't understand what happened. Uh, changes in temperature, being more cold or more hot. Uh, so things uh, being stressed, having slept a few hours, and uh, being more emotional for whatever reason. 
Uh, the, the second important um, complication is gastrointestinal symptoms. They have a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms and we can review them also. And then the third complication is that there is a lot of uh, bone complications. Some patients might lose bone mass like osteopenia, osteoporosis. And then there is also a brain fog or what we call the neurocognitive complications of mastocytosis. So there's a lot of symptoms that are, that are driven in the brain. And, and the reason for that is, as I was mentioning, that the mast cells are uh, located uh, all in the body. They kind of release what we call the mast cell mediators. And those mediators can be histamine, which makes us itchy and flushed, and can be prostaglandins, which can open up the blood vessels associated with the low blood pressure. It can be leukotrans, can be uh, uh, any other um, mast cell mediator. And those can occur you know, vocally, for example, it can be just in the skin and suddenly patients are flushed and itchy, but they can be systemic. So they have gastrointestinal symptoms, abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, reflux, vomiting, and then, and then they can also pass out because they have those anaphylactic events where the blood pressure goes down. And some patients also have, you know, kind of born, um, you know, bone pain, but also fractures because the mast cells make the bones may fragile. And, and finally, you know, what I was mentioning at the beginning about the brain fog and um, neurocognitive impairment, there is a, a, you know, a gradation. Some patients don't have any of those symptoms. Some patients have a lot of those symptoms. It can be more irritability, a little bit more depression, a short memory span, inability to concentrate. All of those things can happen due to the mast cell mediators.